hand them over to our famously dynamic duo, uh, Ms. Dixon, the senior counselor, and Ms. Chisholm, the college and career counselor. So we call them Chixon around here on campus because you usually always see them together. Thank you, Mrs. Payton. Good morning, everyone, um, for your rising seniors class of 2025. Can you believe it? They were just in kindergarten, they were just in sixth grade, eighth grade, and now they're about to be seniors. So we're excited um, come fall to work with your, with your students. Um, as Ms. Um, Payton said, there is a two for one senior year. When you see one, you see the other for the most part, and that's how we deal with the kids together. So our roles are very different. So I am the 12th grade counselor, so I handle everything prior to graduation. So that's their credits, their schedule, uh, graduation qualifications, any concerns about grades, any concerns about teachers, just in general their concerns, something they're anxious about, um, and anything before graduation. Mrs. Chisholm is after graduation. So resources for college, two-year, four-year military trade school, anything that they think of, recommendations and nominations for military. So anything after graduation, that's Mrs. Chisholm. And so when we meet with them in the fall, we make this distinction very clear to them. So a lot of the information that you are getting here today is what your senior is going to see in August when we meet with them. As far as senior conferences go, so the way it sets up, we wait about three weeks into the school year because we're trying to get schedules set, um, everything set, and it's the Friday, usually before Labor Day, that we meet with them through English classes. So by the end of the day, we would have seen close to 600 students through English classes. And so there is a PowerPoint, um, there is a, a, a navy blue folder that they receive with all the information that we share with them to get them started for the year. So after we have that senior meeting, um, and, and their eyes are rolling in the back of their head with all this information we give them, we say, come on and see us. There's no reason to wait. Whatever your dream is, whatever your journey you're trying to go on, come see us. And so we have conferences all year long with them. Um, and so um, they can come by anytime. We do have notebooks on the counter and guidance for every grade level. Um, and so they'll be directed to where our books are. And Ms. Buchanan, our fabulous guidance secretary, always makes that distinction with them about what you need so they're signing the right book. Um, but if it's an emergency, certainly they can come in and we meet with them. Um, if it's not, we make sure that we see them within the next day. Um, you see on there that we meet with seniors um, August and April. April is when we have our closeout meeting for graduation. So our current seniors, we're going to have a closeout meeting with them, all things graduation, because we want to make sure that everyone is always informed. Good morning, everyone. Um, I know that the question I get a lot from parents is how do we know, how do you know what we're telling your senior? And you're going to know that by the Senior Weekly Newsletter. The newsletter will start on August 26th, um, and it will be sent out every Monday that school's in session. So if school's in session, there's a newsletter going out. It will be sent to you. It will be sent to your senior, all via email. It will also be presented in their senior English class. Um, so they're going to hear it and get it by, via email. It's also going to be posted in Canvas, Class of 2025, and it's also on my webpage, which you want to get real familiar with, lchism.weebly.com. You want to get real familiar with that webpage because there's a lot of updates on that. But everything that you need to know, everything from scholarships to what college reps on campus, when the FAFSA deadline is, when prom tickets are being sold, anything is going to be pushed out through that newsletter. So you'll definitely want to get your hands on that. How do I get the email address? It's the email address that you have in Power School. So please, please, please make sure that's the correct email address because I will pull those down in the fall from Power School and that will be my senior parent database for emails. And that's what I'll be sending them out. So if it's incorrect in there, please make sure that you get that corrected. That's very important. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, the million dollar question we get is about applying to colleges. Um, and that's something they need to start soon. They can start in August. It's our recommendation they apply to three to five colleges, whether it's two year, four year. They need a reach school, they need a backup school. Please note that it's always Ms. Dixon's plan, it's my plan, that in the spring of each year, and our current seniors are just starting to do this now with their parents, that you can sit down at the kitchen table next spring and look at options. Okay, we can go here and it's going to cost so much. We can do this and it's going to cost that. 
but we won't have those options if we don't apply in the fall. So we're going to hit the ground running. As Ms. Dixon said, we're going to meet with them in the fall. They're going to get their senior handbook um, with a lot of other documents in a blue folder. So be looking for that. Um, and we're going to tell them then it's time to start applying. College apps need to be completed by November 1st. Um, many college scholarship deadlines are November 1. Some are December 1, some are January 1, but many of them are November 1. And what that means is you have to apply and been accepted before you can be considered for those scholarships and all the steps that goes into applying. So we want all that done early. Um, how do you apply to a college? It's on the college website. You'll go to the University of Memphis website or the UTK website or Ole Miss or wherever and apply now. And that's how you'll fill out that application. That's step one. There's three steps to apply, but that's step one. Um, and that's the first thing that they need to do. Um, but again, we want that done between August and November. Here it is specifically set out about the specific application process. You'll complete the college application online, and again, that can be done at the college website. Now, some colleges you'll go to, um, Rhodes is an example, Vanderbilt's an example, UTK gives you an option where you can complete their application, the college's application, or you can use what's called Common App. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that, about what Common App is. Some schools give you the option. Um, some schools take you straight to the Common App website, um, but each school is, is different. But again, that's step one. Step two is sending an official transcript, and that's what Ms. Buchanan, and our registrar, does. And the steps on sending a transcript are on the screen up there. They have to go to the Arlington High School page, and you have to authorize that. Step three is sending your ACT scores, and that's done at ACT.org. Three steps to apply, not just one, not just filling out the application online. You've got to do two and three, and you've got to do them in that order. You don't want to send a transcript to a school that you haven't even applied to yet, because they're going to receive it. They can't match it with an app. They're going to trash it, and you've wasted your time and money. So you want to make sure you do that in that order. We're going to talk a little bit in a minute about um, recommenders. If you're applying to a school that does require recommendations, some do and some don't. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Please note we are a non-ranking high school, which means we do not rank them one, two, three, four. Um, we have the Coon Law recognition and graduation, but we are a non-ranking high school. About 60% of the high schools in the country today are non-ranking, and we are one of them. Let's talk a little bit more about Common App. I made reference to that a minute ago. When you go to some schools' websites, again, Rhodes and Vanderbilt, for example, and you click Apply Now, it's going to take you straight to Common App. When you go to UTK, it's going to say, do you want to fill out the UTK app or the Common App? And that, that's, that's your, your senior next year's decision whether they want to go. Our word of advice is, if given the option, if they're applying to more than one school that's in Common App, then go ahead and do Common App. If not, use the college's application. So it really depends. Common App has a lot of steps to it. Um, it has teacher recommendations and secondary reports and mid-years and a lot of pieces to it. But once they complete that one Common App, they can send it to multiple Common App schools. So it's one time for them. So that's the benefit of that. Um, but if they're not applying to any Common App schools, they might as well use the, the school's application itself. It'll save them some time. Mrs. <clears throat> Susan mentioned the second step in the process is the transcript. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, the official transcript is going from Arlington High School electronically to the college of choice, or the trade school, or the military, or whatever the option is. Um, transcripts are always on our home page at the bottom under useful links. It says request transcript and it walks you through are you a current student or you're a graduate. Um, ACT scores, which was the third step, must be sent directly from ACT. Um, as you know, your juniors are getting ready to take um, the state ACT after spring break. Um, so the state requires that you have an ACT as a graduation requirement. So we offer it here two times a year. Um, so you will be able to um, list some schools that you want to receive the ACT, but we don't send those. Um, your senior will receive an unofficial transcript two times a year. Um, in September, um, and that is after summer school has occurred, they will receive an unofficial transcript because as you start applying, they're going to ask you for information. Um, 
um, your uh, unweighted GPA, your weighted GPA, um, information about the classes that you've taken so they have that. Um, when grades are stored in December, um, they get another unofficial transcript in January. And every time they receive their unofficial transcript, it is through their English class. Um, they did receive an unofficial transcript. It said um, graduation check sheet, so it looked in a little different format. Mrs. Payton gave that to every junior so they could see all the credits that they've earned up to this point. Um, they can kind of check off their graduation requirements. So it's important that you know they are going to re be receiving those. Let's talk a second about letters of rag. Um, the common belief is that if my singer is applying to college and applying for scholarships, we, we need to go and get some letters of rag. You want letters of recommendation if the college requires it or if the scholarship requires it. Otherwise, you don't. Um, in the world that we're just to enter into, you want to do exactly what they ask for. If they ask for two regs, we're going to send two. If they say three and an optional, we're going to do three and an optional. You want to do exactly what it says, cross the T's and dot the I's. Um, any of the counselor regs that are done are done by me. Um, and yes, there's 500 plus in this class, and there's one of me. Um, so let me tell you how that works. In the fall, when we meet um, with your senior and give them everything they need and their blue folder and their senior handbook and all that, in that folder is going to be a parent brag sheet and a senior brag sheet. Please take time and fill that out. You know your senior, you know your child better than anyone does. And information that you can give me is priceless. When I sit down to do a recommendation, um, I don't do AI. <laughs> I don't do, several have asked me that. Some seniors asked me this, this year, do I do AI? No, I do not. Um, I'm going to read what you have written. I'm going to read what your senior has written. Um, I'm going to look over their senior resume, which will be their first assignment in senior English next year. Um, I'm going to talk to some of their former teachers and counselors, and I'm going to sit down with a blank page, and I'm going to start writing. Um, it takes me two, two and a half hours to write one, so if you wonder where I am in September and October, on Saturday nights and Sunday afternoons after church, I'm, I'm writing racks. Um, and a lot of the time here, we take them very seriously. The teachers here take them very seriously. Um, but do remember, and I'll tell, I'm going to tell the seniors the same thing next year. Be respectful when asking for one. Uh, don't come today and tell me you need one tomorrow. I can't do that. That's not possible. Um, and I wouldn't do you justice in doing one. Um, and the same thing with the teachers. They've got 150 students to teach. Most of the recs they do are evenings and weekends, so be respectful. We do ask for a two-week um, request ahead of time um, so that we can look over those and line those up and make sure we're meeting all those deadlines. We do not give open letters of rec. What that means is teachers and I will not write a rec letter and hand it to them. That doesn't have near the weight or the integrity as a closed letter of rec. Um, I will send it directly where it needs to be sent. Most, probably 90% of recommendations are done electronically now. Um, your senior will fill out an application for either a scholarship or a college who your recommenders are going to list my name and email address and their teachers and it's all done electronically um, so that's how most of them are done but I do and I will encourage them next year to please be respectful um, of our time so that we can give them what they need you notice we've said a lot your senior your senior your senior next year um, Ms. Dixon and I are real um, proponents of your senior advocating next year. Uh, remember, in just a year, they're going to be on a campus somewhere or in the workforce or in the military. Um, and at that point, for those of you that have those that have already graduated, colleges and all will not talk to you very much. They just want your money, but they will not disclose much information to you. Um, we want them to come in and ask questions. Uh, they can come in and ask Ms. Buchanan about transcript. We really want them to learn to self-advocate. Um, this is a safe place to do it. This is a good place to start practicing that. Um, I want them next year to know the difference in the registrar's office and the bursar's office and not get those things confused. Um, we want them to understand our roles. So we want them to come, like I said, and self-advocate. Um, email us, come by and do that. It's real important that they start doing that.
college visits, um, we really encourage um, your rising seniors to take college visits. Mr. Abraham has been gracious enough to continue the tradition of allowing two college visit days a year. So there's quite a bit of time. Um, we definitely encourage if you're going on summer vacation, you happen to be in a city that a school that your child is considering, take a college visit then. But during the school year, um, they can take it all the way up to um, April 1st. Um, and so there's a procedure for that that we walk them through. There's a form that they have to either print off Ms. Chisholm's webpage or get from the guidance office. Um, anytime you schedule a tour in most colleges, they're going to have a link. Um, select, you know, a college visit. You can go online and set that up. But they're going to give you a form after that college visit has taken place indicating that your student came on this date um, for the college visit. So they bring the college visit form. Um, to guidance the next day that they return to school before 715 along with whatever documentation that particular school has given them. So we really believe in college visits because I know once you get on a campus and your, your child can really envision themselves there for the next two or four years, that's very powerful. You know, the, the, the web is wonderful, you can take a virtual tour, but sometimes there's just nothing like being on that campus. Um, you can schedule uh, additional things on that tour with a particular department that your child is interested in. Of course, they're going to show you the dorms. Of course, they're going to show you the, the, the uh, cafeteria and all the food. And yes, you can get Chick-fil-A at this particular place. But really, you want to get to talk to them about you know, what services are provided that are particular to your student and what's offered um, through those departments. OK, let's talk a minute about money. Um, and we're going to talk primarily first about financial aid and what that really means. Um, please become familiar with the TSAC website. Uh, that's the Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation. Um, that's where the Hope Lottery Scholarship and the Tennessee Promise Scholarship all run through, along with some of the others listed on the screen. Um, so we talk about financial aid. We're talking about what's up here right now. Um, we're going to talk, there's, the next slide is about FAFSA. We're going to talk a lot about FAFSA. Um, for those of you um, that have friends that have current seniors, um, you know the journey that we are walking through right now with FAFSA after um, too many years. Uh, FAFSA decided to reorg this year the entire FAFSA, um, and it, boy has it been a journey for the class of 2024 and those parents, for all of us. So um, by next year, y'all should be in good shape, Lord, Lord willing. Um, but we'll talk about the FAFSA in just a second. When we talk about that, we're talking about loans, we're talking about Pell Grants, um, those type of things when we talk about that FAFSA. Um, please know, typically about this time next year, um, if your student has applied to a college, been accepted to a college, and you listed it on your FAFSA, we're going to talk about FAFSA in just a minute, you'll start getting um, your notices, your financial award letters. And that's when you really know what it costs to go there. That's where the real breakdown is. Of, um, they can receive this much aid, this much loan, this much grant, this much scholarship. We can guesstimate before then, but when those letters start rolling in, and it's in the spring, it's this time of year when they start rolling in, that's when you can really sit at the kitchen table and, and talk those numbers. Um, remember when you get those financial award letters, and we'll talk more about this as the year goes on, you can cherry pick off of there. It's not all or none. Um, so that's important to remember. We will have a financial aid night in the fall. Um, we always have a representative from TSAC and THAC, the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. Ms. Orr comes from Nashville and presents, and she will walk through the FAFSA and answer all those questions. So stay tuned for that. That'll go out in the newsletter, and you'll know when that is. And that's held in the evening at 530 is when we usually host that in here. So stay tuned for that. It'll also be on my webpage. We made a lot of reference to FAFSA, and let's talk about what that is. The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. You will all be filling out the FAFSA next year. Doesn't matter what your household income is, um, doesn't matter the dynamics, um, every senior will need to have a FAFSA on file. Because even though they have said, we will give your child this scholarship amount of money, they cannot officially award it unless there's a FAFSA on file. Some key things about FAFSA are, the deadlines to fill it out for you are between October and February. Do not do it before then. If you're doing it before then, you're doing the wrong one. 
Um, do not do it after February uh, because there, it takes time. You're going to send this application to FAFSA the world. They have to recognize that it's a Tennessee student and we're a home lottery state. And then it has to get here. Then it has to get to Arlington. And I have to go in and verify them all as eligible or ineligible for HOPE, uh, whether they use that or not. So that takes time. So that's why that window of time is October to February. You'll be using 23 tax data and you'll be filling out the 25-26 FAFSA because that'll be your child's first year at a community college or Votech or four-year school. What can you do right now? You can go on and register with FAFSA and that's where you do that at studentaid.gov. Please know you, one parent has to do it and the senior and you must have different email addresses. You cannot both use the same email address, but you can go on and register with it. You just can't fill out the application yet. But that's something, some housekeeping you can go on and do. Um, put that password away in a safe place and you're ready for next October. Um, so that's some important stuff about FAFSA and why we'll all be filling that out. You'll hear a lot about FAFSA and see that on the newsletters as we go along. and we get asked about this a lot, obviously. In the blue folder that your senior gets in the fall, along with the handbook and the brag sheets, there's going to be a scholarship source sheet. Two pages of scholarships are listed there. It's a good starting place. Um, those are outside scholarships. That's your Coca-Cola and Tylenol and Burger King and those outside scholarships. On the back of that scholarship source sheet will be scholarship search engines, just like Google is an information search engine. And I don't put any on that source sheet unless a student from Arlington has received a scholarship from there. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of Bobo ones out there, so I tell I tell senior parents and seniors don't don't get too far off down a rabbit hole. Stay on those that are listed there. But when we use that term scholarships, it can be anything from athletic. Obviously, that's awarded by the school. Um, merit or academic, which is based on typically their GPA and ACT, um, and there's the community ones. We've already talked about the source sheet and the engines. Remember, you can't double dip out of one pot. What I mean is if your child has a 4.0 and a 29, and you go to a college's website and see what they qualify for, merit or academic, they get that scholarship, not the ones below it, but only that one. But they could also get an athletic one. They could also get outside ones and stack those up. Um, you rarely hear about a student, when you hear students say we got a full ride, it's typically because they have stacked some scholarships up. Um, it's what they've done. So we want to take advantage of all those. And applying for scholarships takes time. It does. Um, when they register with some of those search engines, I tell them your email is going to blow up. Get ready. Um, so a lot of them will be rolling in, but we certainly want to take advantage of it. Um, a perfect example, and we have a lot in the local area. Our own PTSA um, does a scholarship for our seniors um, every year. Um, your senior has to be a member of the PTSA. We send that information out in the fall, um, and we really want to encourage that. I mean, that's our own. Uh, moms and dads, this is y'all that, that offer this great opportunity for our seniors. So um, you don't want to miss out on, on those opportunities. There are two state scholarships um, we're excited about and grateful that the legislature keeps going. The first one is the Hope Lottery Scholarship. When we run this um, information to the seniors and a lot of times they're asking about it just to make sure how, um, to know how they qualify. And so Ms. Chisholm lists that information in the senior handbook. But they qualify for um, about $2,250 per semester, freshman and sophomore year. Um, and then that price increases to 2800 or so junior or senior year. So $16,000 over four years. And you wonder why the price goes up junior and senior. Um, they have found the students start college, but sometimes for whatever reason, they don't progress past freshman or sophomore year. So if you get to junior year and senior year, they're giving you more money. Um, the eligibility for it is a 3.0 unweighted. Um, and so that's the HOPE GPA unweighted. So when you look on your transcript, you're always looking for that unweighted um, or a 21 ACT. And thankfully, since, since its inception, they have never made it, you know, that you need both. It's one or the other. Um, there's GAMS, so that's an additional $500 um, per semester for students, and that's if they have a 29 or higher on the ACT and a 3.75 unweighted. Um, and it only applies to Tennessee schools. We get that question quite a bit. It is only Tennessee schools that you qualify for. I mean, you have to have lived in the state of, of Tennessee 
that senior year. And so sometimes we get students from out of state and they have those questions and we're sure to answer that for them. There's also the Tennessee Promise Scholarship. Um, that is a last dollar scholarship, again, for Tennessee residents. You graduated from a Tennessee high school and you're applying to a two-year college or a TCAT school, Tennessee College of Applied Technology, um, or a school that offers an associate's degree at a four-year university, like Tennessee State University or Austin P. So there's some qualifications for this Tennessee Promise. Um, there are some that have been added along the way because it is encouraging students to stay in Tennessee. And so we run all that information to the seniors so that they're aware. Again, just like with the HOPE, you have to um, have completed FAFSA. Um, there is one application that they have to complete by November 1. Um, and as Chisholm talked about, one of the first assignments that they have to do is a resume. The second one is completing the Tennessee Promise. So they do this through their English classes in August. And then the closer it gets to that November 1 deadline, the guidance office is full. Ms. Buchanan and I pull out that iPad here in the direction we want to make sure, and we make sure that every student in the class completes this scholarship. Because even if you don't think you're going to attend a two-year college, we want to make sure that you have this option in case you need it. So a lot of things happen between August when we talk to them and May when they graduate. So we want to make sure that that promise is um, an option for them if they need it. Um, the Tennessee Promise representatives from the state come here. They met with our students in January. They let Ms. Chisholm know when they're coming. Um, they receive a FAFSA. Um, they receive a Tennessee Promise handbook. Um, there are eight hours of community service that have to be completed. Um, and so that's on that TN uh, tnpromise.gov website and in the, the packet that they receive. And so we remind them of those things. One good thing about Promise um, across the state, there are mentors who track your student if you're using this Promise. And so they keep up with them even when they're in their two-year program and encourage them to meet deadlines. Um, so we're very um, happy that they have these scholarship opportunities. The real good thing about Promise, and we have more and more students that are using it every year. They're doing the two years at a community college and then transferring. Um, Ms. Dixon and I make a regular habit of staying updated and on training. We go to national conferences. We were in Jacksonville last year. We actually went to one yesterday that was talking about um, how Southwest is going to partner more with Memphis and allow those two years at Southwest to easily transfer over. Um, we actually went to an engineering program at Memphis yesterday and got some updates on that. Um, staying in the, in the realm of talking about money, let's talk about Academic Common Market. Um, Academic Common Market is uh, an organization 15 states have come together. Um, and what it really means is, let me give you an example, and we'll take petroleum engineering as an example. Petroleum engineering is not offered as a major in the state of Tennessee at a state college. So if a major is not offered in our state as a major in a state college, University of Tennessee, Austin P, UT Chat, any of those, but it is offered at another college in one of, that is one, included in one of those 15 states, then your senior can go there and pay in-state tuition. And as you see on the screen, you see the difference. LSU offers that and you can see the difference, 11,000 to 28. That's just tuition. Um, another example is marine biology. Um, I know Southern Miss offers marine biology, Auburn offers it, several of them do. It's not offered at a state school in the state of Tennessee. So if your senior is interested in one of those, and you can see the difference there, difference of 12,000 to 32,000. Huge difference for a yearly cost. So I tell parents whose students really interested in going to an out-of-state school to try to get around some of that out-of-state cost. Sometimes you can go and check out Academic Common Market, and it's a fluid list. Because, you know, we may not offer majors at some of the Tennessee State Schools, but over the summer they may be adding it. So you, you can go on that website and check out the ones that are offered. But you can simply Google Academic Common Market. You can click Tennessee and find out which ones are not offered and where those majors are offered. So it's a way to go um, to some of those um, and avoid some of that out-of-state cost. Uh, Mrs. Chisholm mentioned a while ago that we're a non-ranking school, and so your seniors, this will be the third year that we're doing this. We do have the log system. Um, this listed here, but it's also listed in our course catalog. And I cannot 
um, rave enough about that course catalog. Your seniors, uh, your juniors are probably looking through that when they were picking course selection. That link is on our home page. The first 10 pages of that course catalog are all about requirements to graduate. The number of credits that you have. It explains our law system. It ex explains senior recognition. Um, and also all the courses that we offer. So the first 10 pages, even before you get into courses, are a wealth of information um, that we want students to be familiar with. But you can see the breakdown here of summa, magna, and cum laude recognitions. Um, GPA is not based on semester, uh, not based on each nine weeks. It is based on semester. So GPA is determined semester only in June. So your juniors will finish their junior year in June. That GPA recalculates once the grades are stored. In August, when they're receiving their unofficial, it has recalculated again, mainly for those that have gone to summer school for whatever reason. Um, they're going to receive their uh, transcript in September, right near Labor Day, because you're getting started with your process, they're unofficial. So it's really recalculating when a semester ends and those grades are stored, okay? So we want to make sure that you're familiar with this information. And the balance cell is selected from the summa cum laude category, okay? And so Mrs. Chisholm has listed there some websites for more information, but that takes you to our course catalog. Uh, we also have senior exam exemptions. As you know, 9th, 10th, and 11th, the exam exemption is for um, May, but our seniors have it fall and spring. And so if they have, um, it's determined by period, by teacher, when they have attended those classes. So it's five or less excused absences and a nine-year higher in class. So they're very excited um, to be done in December a little bit early. So those exam exemptions are fall and spring. Um, Mrs. Chisholm made reference to the ACT that the schools are going to have to receive. Tennessee is an ACT state. Um, we do get students who come from other places with the SAT, and that is certainly fine. If you've taken the SAT and you've done well, that you use that. But the majority of our students are using the ACT. Um, this, the state offers the state ACT twice a year. Your seniors, your juniors are going to take that in March, and then again in October. So that registration takes place here on campus. But certainly, we encourage our, our rising I keep saying seniors, I'm sorry. Our rising seniors to um, take the ACT a number of times, um, more than just the two that are offered through the state, because you want to have as many opportunities as possible to get that ACT up, especially for scholarships. Um, you want to have those opportunities available. You see here on the screen that there's an order date where you can, when you're registering for a national ACT, you can also get a copy of that to review your students' answers. So they changed it from December to September. So September, April, and June. So if your juniors are taking it in April, you can order that test. You will receive the test, your students' answers, and the correct answers. And that's invaluable if your student is trying to figure out what I need to work on and what I need to fix um, with that ACT. And so as a graduation requirement, it simply means you, you sat and took the test. We're not looking for a specific score, just that you took it as, in its entirety. Okay, if I have any athletic parents in here, let me talk to you just a second. Um, please know that every college is either NCAA or an NAI school. <laughs> Um, and they need to get registered with either NCAA, Clearinghouse, or NAI by December of their senior year. And I've given you the information, I've given you the websites that they go to, how to complete that process. The transcript then has to be sent. Remember, Ms. Buchanan, the registrar, takes care of all that, um, but they have to request that. Again, a, a, a coach may come from a college or university and offer your athlete monies or opportunities, but until they've been cleared through Clearinghouse or the Eligibility Center, they can't make that official. So we really want to get them registered with those before Christmas. So you want to take care of that. In the handbook, the senior handbook that they get in the fall, it will also have a step-by-step -step how to take care of that. If there are any athletic parents in here. One exciting kickoff for juniors is those senior pictures. Holland Studios comes out in um, well, about four. Holland Studios <laughs> comes out in May um, to talk about those senior pictures. So your seniors, your rising seniors will receive a packet, but here's the information here on the screen. So this is the Holland Studios phone number. So over the summer, they're going to schedule their senior picture. 
okay? That deadline is usually by Labor Day, so we wanna go ahead and call early and get that scheduled. There is a $50 sitting fee to take that picture. So there's a cap and gown, they have everything there for them to take that picture. That picture appears in the yearbook. If you decide that you wanna get a package, a senior picture package. You don't necessarily have to go through Holland Studios. You can go through whoever you want to, but as far as the picture that appears in the yearbook, that is only through that Holland Studio um, photo that they take, okay? Um, so the, the AHS yearbook, they have either the tux or the drape, drape and a casual picture, but you can certainly talk with them about how far you wanna go with that. Um, and so like I said, that meeting is usually in May, right before school gets out, so the, that information will come home to you. Um, graduation recognitions, I spoke about the course catalog and having all that information going into detail. So everything listed there for graduation recognition, when you're looking in there in the course catalog, there's a description for every one of these items listed on the screen for you. We've given you a list of resources and places to kind of jump off and start uh, either scholarships or campus tours or virtual tours. We've given you a whole list of a really good website. College Pays TN is a huge website. A lot of resources are there. Um, and these are some that you'll become very familiar with. Um, but we wanted to go and push those out to you. You'll hear more about them next year, but I wanted to give you the chance with spring break coming and summer coming um, that you could go on and delve into some of those. And definitely go on and check out my webpage. Um, obviously, if you go to the class of 2024, that's stuff about current seniors, but you can see some of the upcoming the calendar and how that kind of rolled out this year. So as we're wrapping up, two things. So what to do this summer, again, on your vacation stops, certainly uh, have a college tour, uh, take some college visits. Um, we talk about a realistic uh, financial conversation with seniors, but of course we want to mention that to you now because sometimes there are tears in Ms. Chisholm's office that they're going to the University of Alabama and they think that there's money there for them to go and sometimes there is not. So having those conversations about what types of schools and the availability of money for your senior. Um, register with scholarship search engines that list. Um, College Page 10, the state revamped that website about a year ago and so there's a wealth of information there. Um, so if you're starting just with state schools, that's a great place to start because every two year, four year trade school is listed on that website. Again, register for the ACT, yes, they'll have an opportunity in October to take it, but certainly take it uh, nationally September or October. Contact Holland Studios to schedule those senior picks. So those are the things to take care of as summer starts. Um, to do first semester, and we run through this with the seniors, um, you're registering for the NCAA Clearinghouse if you haven't already, NAIA Eligibility Center, um, taking the ACT, uh, registering for tutoring if that's happening. If your student keeps getting the same score, some tutoring may need to take place. Um, the newsletter that comes out the Monday after Labor Day, Ms. Chisholm puts valuable information in there right to your email to check that out. Um, FAFSA completion October 1 through February 1, um, and Ms. Chisholm always updates you if anything changes with FAFSA. Um, those college visits, ordering invitations, and other keepsakes, um, Balfour comes out and shares that information with them here during the school day, and applying for scholarships. <coughs> Second semester of senior year, paying attention to those deadlines because there are some deadlines in January and February for scholarships. Keep up with that. Um, we have cap and gown dues, that's $100. We're the cheapest in the area. Ms. Chisholm has been able to keep it $100 for years now. Some other area suburban high schools are higher than that. Um, but when she rolls that out, you don't have to wait until the due date. You can pay in October or you can pay in November. So she always reminds you of that. All letters of recommendation, all letters of acceptance and scholarship are due in guidance um, to Ms. Chisholm um, because that information um, goes into the graduation program. So you want to make sure that information about your student successes are listed. Um, your financial, um, your, your final college choice day is always May 1. That's National uh, Decision Day. And so there is time for that, but we want to make sure that those choices um, and decisions can be made because you've applied in the fall. Um, everything about graduation, Mrs. Chisholm rolls out is on her website. Of course, we keep seniors apprised of anything related to that. Um, 
Let me make reference to a couple of slides that Ms. Dixon just covered. Remember, first semester, you're ordering announcements and keepsakes from Balfour. That's uh, invitations, t-shirts, keychains, all that sort of good stuff. Um, we remind the seniors, and I'll remind you now, it's real easy to get excited about all that next fall and just go crazy with ordering all that. That stuff doesn't come until the spring, right before they walk on a college campus, and they're not going to walk around with stuff that says class of 2025 on it because that screams I'm a freshman. Um, so kind of kind of make it fun to get excited. I'm not saying don't order, but kind of keep that um, in mind. Second semester is the deadline, like she said, for the cap and gown payment, and that's the, the $100, and that covers everything to do with graduation. Um, but you can start paying that in August. Um, she did also remind you only about bringing in those acceptance and scholarship and award letters. Doesn't matter if your senior next year is going to go there or not. A lot of seniors and a lot of senior parents think that we know that at the school. We only know if your senior brings it in. Um, we have no idea where they've been accepted or what they've been offered, and we certainly want to recognize them at graduation for it. So please bring those in. So, senior parents to be, where are we right now? You need to look for the summer letter. I'll be sending that out in July. Ms. Dixon, I'll send a letter out in July with a kickoff with all the updated information. Um, we do want you to send our, attend our senior parent roundtables. We host those four times a year. Um, senior parent roundtables are an opportunity for you to come and ask us any questions that we have, that you may be having. Um, we also have a senior parent advisory board that will be some parents from the current year um, who can answer some of your questions and, and they've, just, uh, they've just walked where you'll be walking. So they're really the experts, they really are. Um, please encourage your senior to self-advocate. We cannot stress that enough. Watch for those newsletters. Um, I know Ms. Dixon made reference to a realistic financial conversation. Please have that. Um, she made reference, like I said, at seniors in the spring, and that, that's sad when they thought all year that they could go to this school and there, there's no money there. If there's no money there, they need to come in and tell me that in the fall so we can start talking realistic and making a plan. So do have that conversation with them. Um, obviously schedule that senior pick. The last thing on the screen there is to check that unofficial transcript for your senior's name. The name that is on that unofficial transcript, which is the same name that's on their report card, that's the name that will be on their diploma, that's the name that will be in the graduation program. So if it's gone on for year after year and it's been misspelled or it was a junior or a third and you never told anybody, got to be done by December of next year because that stuff all starts printing then. So please uh, double check those documents and make sure that's accurate. Ms. Chisholm made reference to the senior parent roundtable. Um, she will send out that information, but really it is, it is awesome to hear from parents who have their freshman in college and giving you all the tips and tricks and pitfalls to avoid. And any question that you've ever had, they can answer it. So it's been wonderful. We've been doing that about four years now. And so um, we really encourage you to come to those. And it's four times a year, September, October, January, and February. Um, lastly, here's our contact information, um, our email addresses. Um, Miss Peyton has your babies until June and we have an official kickoff and she gives me all that information in July. So if there's any course request information that goes to um, Mrs. Peyton at this time. We want to thank you again for taking your time out this morning to come and speak with us um, and have a great weekend. So if you didn't sign in, please sign the form out there before you leave. Thank you.